Uh, welcome to the Cisco Linksys E2000 router setup tutorial. My name is Harry Isbell and I am going to be your host for setting up this tutorial and going through the steps to be able to configure a router. However, this router can be used as a device to set up just about any, ty any type of home router. Um, it's not going to apply towards maybe one of the larger commercial ones that we talked about in the class, but it is going to be what you're going to see out there in the industry when you're going to go to a small business, um, to somebody's house, could even be some type of franchise that you could see this type of router, but you will see these types of routers all the time. And the one again that we're using is the Linksys E2000. So what I'm going to first start with is showing you the command prompt. So we're going to find out what our router set or what our current settings are so that you guys can see for yourself and how to go through these steps. These steps are going to be done every time that you're going to set up a router. So what we want to do here is we want to go to the command prompt. We want to find out what we're currently networked onto. So let's go ahead and go to start. Let's go to the run tab here, which is down in the very bottom and type in CMD for command prompt. Let's hit enter on that. Let's go ahead and type in IPCONFIG. That's going to give me what the current IP address is. So now if you notice on here, there's some other information in there, but mainly what we want to look at is where it says IPv4 address is 192.168.77. So that's my current IP address. Not going to work because my router's not set up on that. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the router device, and I'm going to show you how the changes that it's going to make. So let me pause here, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm waiting for the router to reboot back up. I've just plugged it in to my connection, to my network connection on the PC. This is plugged into the LAN port, or the ports that are the switches. And in this case, on this particular router, it's called Ethernet, and it's labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. The one that we're not going to set it up is the one that says Internet. That's not going to work for us. So currently, I have it plugged into the Ethernet port, and it really is irrelevant which one it's plugged in. But if you guys would like to know, it's plugged into port 3, which you could plug it into 1, 2, or 4, and it wouldn't matter. So let's go ahead and find out what the IP address is. Once you guys see the screen come up, it's pretty much irrelevant. You guys don't need it, so just close it, okay? So let's go back down here to the command prompt. I always like to start off by viewing the screen by typing in CLS, CLS to clear the screen. But currently, as you can see right here, our old IP address is 192.168.1.77. So let's find out what it is. I'm just clearing the screen to make things easy here. I'm going to bring this down just in case it's not in my record window. Let's go ahead and type in IPCONFIG. And we want to release the old IP address by putting a forward slash, typing in release, and hitting enter. All right. Now you notice that I don't see an IP address anywhere on the screen there. That's because we've pretty much released whatever it had on it which is good that means that it worked I want to add again I want to reinforce to you guys that this method to find out what a router is even if you don't know who made it it all the numbers are written off of it this procedure is how you're gonna find out any routers IP address and how to set it up because it's gonna give you a default gateway on this there are some circumstances where this may not work and let me give you those examples that example could be that the router is completely burned up power supply doesn't work, Ethernet ports burned up, and in that case you're going to have to replace it anyways, but in the most part when people do misconfiguration, which is very common, what you're going to do now is you're going to set that up now. So let's do that. Let's type in IPC, whoop, hold on, let's type in CLS, IPCONFIG forward slash renew, waiting for it to connect to the router. And it did. As you can see there, that this router has been previously set up. And if you look right here, you can see it right there. This router has been set up as 125.168.1.121. That happens to be the address that I got. Now, the router itself is always going to be the default gateway. You may ask yourself, why is it 1? Probably is because it was left default. But you can change that. And I'm going to show you where that's going to be changed once we log into the router here. All right, so let's go ahead. Now let's just remember this. So it's 125.168.1.1. So let's go to our web browser. And I need to shrink mine here just to make sure it fits in the window for you guys. Okay. 
And what I want to do is I want to type in that IP address. So that's going to be 125.168.1. Oops, I hit another key while I was typing here. Hang on. Dot one. So let's hit enter on that. Looks like it brought up a screen, which is great. Look, it even told us here what it is. It's the Linksys E2000 requires a username and password. This one, this password hasn't been changed. If it has been changed and you can't get into the router, you're going to have to reset it anyway. So, you know, you're at a customer site. Remember those things I told you about. If the customer has Comcast, there's no point, no problem in knowing their username and password because it's only about email and it's going to automatically work. But if a customer that you guys are working on has a DSL modem, that DSL modem is going to require the username and password to be able to reset it back up again unless it's called um, SDSL. SDSL, which is business class. ADSL is what you guys use currently at home. It's a home one with IP address constantly changes. SDSL is for business. That means it's got a static IP. That'd be the only instance you wouldn't need the username and password. So let's continue on. Then hit the bottom. And I believe this one, the password is admin. And wonderful, it is. So that works perfectly. So let's take this, go down the screen here. Yes, I can see that this has actually been changed here, which is good. Now, you know, in this instance, we could change it around to the default, or what if I couldn't get back into the password on this one? Well, then I'd have to reset it. You can actually set these things up to do. Now, what are these? You may ask, I believe somebody here in the class asked, okay? PPOE is for users that use a DSL modem, and it requires a username and a password. It simulates that. Static IP is where we know the IP address. Now, we can set this up in this lab as well using the static IP address, but we just need to know exactly what IP address we can use. And I can show you guys in class on the next lab. So that's something you need to talk to me about, and I'll know that you guys watch this tutorial because you need to tell me, Mr. Isbell, let's set up the static IP and make the router work too. All right? Fair enough. All right? Okay. So if we selected it, just to show you what comes up here on the screen, you notice that we have a static IP set up here, which is great. We can configure everything manually. I believe I was trying to show you guys this while we were doing the tutorial in the classroom, and I didn't find it. But I did find it now in the tutorial, which is even better. So you guys have now a permanent copy of it, and you can watch it on this particular router all you want. See, I can set up a permanent IP address here, the subnet mask for it, and the default gateway. That's going to be what we're using for the internet or the WAN side of it. This is to set up the WAN manually. Currently, what it is is it's set up automatically, so whatever it accepts coming down the wire, perfect. Okay. So anyways, let's continue on down here, and you'll notice that we have the IP address is set up here currently to this. Eh, good enough. I mean, it's just to show you what's going on with it. What I want to do here is I want to reset this. So let's go ahead and kill this. And I'm going to reset it back to default. This is in case for some reason I didn't have um, the IP address to it. So let me grab my pin here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reset the router. I'm going to hold down the button for 10 seconds. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. And I'll release the reset button. The router is resetting itself right now. It's rebooting back up. It takes a few seconds to do that. I'm waiting for it, waiting for the link lights to come on. That's going to be the one, two, three, and four is going to actually light up when it's finished its reboot. It's almost done. I see one blinking already. Looks like it's rebooted. So let's go in here again. Now, what I did here is I reset the router. That was if I didn't know what the password was. And this is going to happen to you periodically out in the field. So let's go ahead and type that. Let's clear the screen. CLS. I'm going to type in IPCONFIG forward slash release. You notice that I don't have an IP address on there. Clear the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and type in IPCONFIG forward slash renew. And we're waiting for it to come back up. And you'll notice here that the IP address, this is the default, what this particular router likes to use. So 
you'll see that the IPv4 address is 192.168.1.126 and you got your subnet mask there and you'll notice what's the default gateway again the default gateway is also how the network connects but it also happens to be the router so let's go ahead and open it up again and we're going to put in that number which was 192.168 one dot whoops one dot one dot one enter good gave me the screen again I know that I'm on a different at least I'm on a, I'm on the router and it's ready to log in let's type in admin and as you can see I'm back in again uh, kind of frivolous that these little menus come up on here it's like I said it's prompting you to try to use that software but that's okay we don't want to use that software anyways so let's go back down here and let's say let's change our network to uh, let's change it to 10 dot whoops sorry not dot in there click on the next one and let's type in 100 let's type in 121 and then let's type in 234 just to show the difference that we can have on the different routers um, these things, by the way, are nice to set up. They're more of a human component to set up what's called the host name and the domain. These are just humanly making it easier for you guys to see what's going on in the network. So if you're scanning it, you're a person like Jeff and you're working in the industry and you want to know what the equipment was that you set up, this is a way to give it a description so then when you ping it or you want to view it with a packet analyzer or whatever, it can reveal its name. So we could call this... Uh, just for example, router one would be fine. Doesn't have it. Just has to be something that's encoded or some kind of a naming naming convention that's okay with what you guys are doing. I believe I just clicked on something. Hold on. Okay, good. It didn't go. All right. Now, one thing you got to make sure of: don't pay any attention to this until you restart it. Then it will change all of these options. So let's go ahead and go down here, and then save it first. And what's going to do is it's now rebooting the router. Now. Some of you may have tried to log in after this and wondered why it wouldn't why it wouldn't connect. Hold on, let me bring on the menu here. Sorry about that. Um, why it wouldn't connect? Well, it's trying to connect, reconnect again with the same IP address that it had before. So you're wondering, well, why is it, you know, Mr. Isbo? I keep having you go through IP config because every time you change the settings on the router, you have to reset up the IP address again. So doing it with DHCP makes that task a lot simpler. However, you guys do need to learn how to do this manually, okay? Even though it's asking me, look at what it says up on the screen there. It says that it did take an IP address again. So there's a possibility it did work. You'll see it right here. Look, it took the router's IP address right there. So it may have already automatically set it up, but you can't always rely on it to do that because some of them just aren't going to do that. This one is a very friendly one doing that. So let's, let's try it and see if I can get in that way. And it did. It did let me back in. And if you guys notice here right on the web, look at what it did. It changed the IP address for me. So let's let's confirm that. Let's go back inside the command prompt. Type in CLS. Then type in, let's type in IP, CLN, FIG, and hit enter. Now since this computer is set up to do DHCP automatically, it updated for me. But the reason why I have you guys do it manually every time. So number one rule, it's good for your soul. Two, it's absolutely a must so you know how to do it because the automatic way does not work 100% of the time. It probably works maybe 30 or 40% of the time. That's why you, the technician, needs to learn this technique and you guys got to keep this as an FYI. So currently look at what my IP address is. You know, from what you guys have seen so far, the default gateway has normally been a 1 or it's been a real easy number. Look at what I've done here. I've changed the default gateway to 234. So I've completely changed it from what's standard, excuse me, which also makes it difficult or least uncommon to your average hacker. To set up a password on this, one thing that you must always think about every time you set up this router, okay, that we didn't cover in class, you want to put a password on Let me exit out of this you need to secure this machine so to do this you don't want somebody that's walking in or logging in there and then actually setting up and allowing things that you don't want to have and I believe let's see is it access restrictions setup let's try and find out where it is I don't see anything on here let's see security probably is where it is nope
you know, I got a feeling that I bet this one is going to be able to set the password up. In a way, I feel like you might, we might have to have the CD. So let's let me keep going. I'm gonna keep looking here and trying to find it. Time zones, network setup. Basic setup. Is there an advanced routing? I see advanced routing, but I don't. Here, administration. Let's see if this is it. Ah, there we go. Now I could set this up with a different password, so which is good. So I can set it up with another one. So on this particular instance, it's under administration. So I would go first under setup, and then I would go to the administration tab, and you want to change this default password. Absolutely imperative that you guys get on that scheme of doing that because there's nothing like you doing a, a wonderful job at a place and then all of a sudden somebody that was getting into the system gets back in and destroys everything you did because people tend to remember what mistakes you made instead of the ones that you did well because that sticks out in their mind so try to always fix everything and and be be real cautious of going quickly and not doing this quickly so this is why I want you guys to learn this and understand it and do it over and over until you guys know it and you know it in your head inside and out to where anyone asks you a question about it you can just repeat right off what the answer is and confidently know how to do that alright well thank you guys for joining me I hope that this tutorial is working out good for you guys give me a little bit of feedback on it and have a good day and ask me any other questions that you guys may have about the routers I'll be glad to help you with it Thank you and have a good day.